The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Once upon a time in Paris, Minister Frollo was out on the streets making sure everything was in order in the great city when a sound cut through the silence of the night. Well, everything's in order. People in their homes, the streets empty of trouble. All is well. <laughs> what is that sound? <coughs> what is it? What is it? Give it to me. Uh, what kind of a creature is this? Maybe he can stay with me and someday he might be useful. And so it came to be. Frollo named the child Quasimodo and let the boy stay with him. But Frollo had an evil heart that could not love the child and Quasimodo was nothing but Minister Frollo's slave, never allowed to step out of the bell tower of Notre Dame. Quasimodo had just one friend in the whole wide world, a bird who flew to the heights of the bell tower and brought him all the news. Hey, you should see all the preparations for the Festival of Fools down there. Tell me all about it. Master's here, get out. Master? Well, I hope the lunch is ready, and this time the soup is not burnt. No, Master. Today I have been really careful. We'll see about that. Why have you not laid it out yet? In a moment, Master. Be quick for once, Quasimodo. I don't have all day. I have this terrible meeting for the Festival of Fools that is happening tomorrow. The biggest waste of time ever! The Festival of Fools? Already? With the big parade and the singing and the dancing and the magical tricks of the gypsies? You are not thinking of going, are you? And how do you know so much about the festival? I assure you, Master, I have never stepped out of this place. It is just what I have seen from up here. Good. And don't you ever think about stepping out. With a face like yours, people will ridicule you, make fun of you, and hurt you. After all the years I have fed you, looked after you, don't disappoint me. And don't you dare make a laughing stock out of me by showing that terrible face of yours in public. Yes, Master. Good. The soup is good. Only the salt is a bit extra, but it's good. And now for my meeting. There is this new captain coming today. Oh, it is hard work being a minister. He is mean. He is right. No, he's not. And even the soup is great. No, it is not. Try it yourself. It is delicious. Try it. It is very good. The salt is just perfect. See? Frollo is not always right. In fact, he is never right. Come to the festival. I can't. Come on. He is so busy he won't even notice. I'll take you to a place where no one will be able to see you. But you will be able to see everyone from real close. What say you? I don't know about it. You and I are going to the festival tomorrow. So, Quasimodo decided to go to the festival. In the meanwhile, a new captain came to Paris. May I come in, minister? Oh, Captain Phoebus, welcome to Paris. You have your work cut out. Whatever you command, sir. Tomorrow we have this horrible festival of fools. I don't know why the king likes to encourage the riffraff like the gypsies with their little tricks and singing and dancing. Such a waste of time. You have to ensure that the gypsies abide by the law. And if you catch any of them stealing or breaking the law, show no mercy. As you say, rest assured I won't let anything go wrong at the festival tomorrow. Dismissed. And the day of the festival dawned. People began to gather in the town square. An old woman was heading towards the festival. Get 
you see where you are going? How dare you speak to our minister like that? Apologize! Apologize? My foot! It is your minister who needs to apologize to this old woman whom he almost killed! How dare you! You gypsy! Guards, arrest her! Meanwhile, Quasimodo and his friend found an empty tent around the stage where they could hide and see the festival. It's beautiful! Today I shall be crowned the king of the festival! You wait and watch! So you will! No one is as strong as you! What if you don't win? God help the man who does win! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Paris, we now present to you the competition we have all been waiting for, the crowning of the King of Fools! Quasimodo, how dare he? What have we here? Such a remarkable face! Such acrobats! Do we have the King of Fools this year? Yes! 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 Then let us parade him! Behold! The King of the Festival of Fools! That thing cannot be the King of the Festival! Attack him! <laughs> Stop! Stop this madness! That girl has got spunk! That's the same girl! Captain Phoebus, arrest her right now! For what crime, sir? Don't you dare disobey me, Captain! Arrest her! Are you alright? You would be kind to me? Ugly me? Who says you are ugly? You're just different! But then we are all different from each other, aren't we? Mwah. You are under arrest! No, she isn't! I will not permit you to punish someone for being kind! But these are the minister's orders! Fight him, and don't let the girl get away! Come with me! I know where you will be safe! Quasimodo took Esmeralda into his bell tower for hiding. You will be comfortable here. Uh, food, you must be hungry. My soup? Yes! Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> sorry. <sighs> oh, the horrible awkwardness of love. Don't listen to him. <laughs> you are so sweet. The soup is really good. Quasimodo was surely falling in love with the only human who had ever been kind to him. He was so thankful for having Esmeralda with him, but one day... The head of guard for the city of Paris, Captain Phoebus, has been tried for treason and will be punished publicly tomorrow morning. The bird flew to Quasimodo and told Quasimodo and Esmeralda everything. Ay, this is all because of me! I must help the captain. No, I am the one who is at fault. I have just stayed in here and never come to the festival at all. Ah! Don't you think that instead of blaming yourselves, it would be a far better idea to actually help the captain? Maybe I can get myself arrested. No, never. I, I won't let that happen. We shall get the captain freed. Come with me. Quasimodo, Esmeralda, and the bird went to the palace where Captain Phoebus was to be tried the next morning in the town square. Can you ride a horse? Of course! Everything is ready for tomorrow! Let's go home and get some rest, shall we? The next morning, the entire town gathered to see how Captain Phoebus would be punished for helping an innocent girl and her friend. Captain Phoebus, you deliberately disobeyed my orders 
and helped a fugitive run away from the law. What do you have to say for yourself? She was not a fugitive. She was an innocent girl trying to stop cruelty to another human being. I might forgive you if you apologize. Punish me all you want, but I have done nothing wrong. I have only done my duty as a soldier by protecting the innocent. Very well. Guards, attack him. <laughs> Quick, this way. <laughs> they went that way, you fools. Quasimodo, Esmeralda, and Captain Phoebus rode long until they were outside the city of Paris. But Frollo and his guards did not stop chasing them. They took a different road and finally managed to ambush them. You thought you could get away from me, did you? You cannot arrest us here. We are no longer in Paris. But you can be taken to Paris. And you, Quasimodo, after I fed you and looked after you, monster, you would betray me like this. I'm just different, just as we all are. And you kept me locked up in the bell tower all my life, treated me like a slave. How dare you, master? Arrest them! Frollo's guards were about to arrest them when they heard sounds of an army approaching. They saw it was Emperor Louis IV. Your Highness. What is going on, Frollo? We shall tell you, Your Highness. And Esmeralda told everything to the Emperor. The Emperor was angry and had Frollo arrested. Esmeralda, Phoebus, and Quasimodo were free to go. Well, you are all free, but Captain, I could do with someone like you to run the city of Paris. Think about it. You both saved my life. And you saved ours. We haven't met formally. Uh, hello, my lady. I am Captain Phoebus, and you are beautiful. <laughs> I am Esmeralda, Captain. <sighs> and you, sir, you would be? He is Quasimodo, my best friend. 